Whereas you might have to upgrade your CPU later down the line, even though you saved $100. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Taylor and today I have the 13600K and the 7800X3D, and I am going to be comparing these two CPUs because these are two of arguably the most popular gaming CPUs on the market today. We're gonna first look at the spec differences between these two because they are quite different. Then we're gonna jump into some live gaming and see how these two perform while actually in-game, while in-game stats are running. Then we'll dive into further benchmarks with gaming in a little more of a controlled environment. You can see some graphs and some numbers and kind of make comparisons between the two. Then we're gonna go ahead and jump into some productivity benchmarks because Let's be honest, we're not always gonna be gaming on our CPUs, so which one offers the better value in terms of productivity like video editing and coding? We'll also look at some synthetic benchmarks on how these two stack up in Cinebench and Geekbench. We have a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and get right into it. As always, this video is not sponsored and any links that are in the description are not affiliate links. First off, the specs of these CPUs. Let's start off with the 7800X3D it has eight cores and 16 threads. It has a base clock speed of 4.2 gigahertz and it has a max boost clock speed of 5.0 gigahertz. It has 96 megabytes of L3 cache with a max TDP of 120 watts. And of course it uses the AM5 socket. So it is compatible with AM5 motherboards and it uses DDR5 RAM. As for these 13600K, it has six performance cores, eight efficiency cores for a total of 14 cores and a total thread count of 20 threads. The max turbo frequency is 5.1 gigahertz. It has 24 megabytes of L3 cache and it has a maximum turbo power of 181 watts. It is compatible with DDR4 or DDR5 RAM, but I have DDR5 RAM paired here today. It is compatible with Z690 and Z790 motherboards. Currently the 13600K is retailing for $340 in US dollars. And the 7800X3D is retailing for $449 that is US dollars. Before we jump into the live gaming, I just wanna let you know that these systems are identical except for the CPU and motherboard. I have these processors in the same case, running the same version of Windows, running the same graphics drivers, the same atmospheric conditions in the same room on the same desk with the RTX 4080. They both have a terabyte of SSD space and it is exactly the Samsung 980 Pro, both of them are using that SSD, both of them are using DDR5 32 gigs at 6000 megahertz. It is the same exact type of RAM. So the conditions here are identical except for the CPUs and the motherboards. And I did that to provide y'all with the most accurate comparison of these CPUs. So now let's go ahead and check out some live gaming. Here we are in Modern Warfare 2. I have my custom loadout here. I'm gonna be using the Cronin Squall. And in the corner here, I have all the hardware information. So our 7800X3D, the 4080, and 32 gigs dual channel running at 6,000 mega transfers per second. I loaded up a free-for-all match here just so we can kind of see what the performance is like on the 4080 with the CPU. And you can see that we are at 99% GPU usage with 36% of the CPU so that we know we're taking full advantage of our CPU right there. Our GPU is the one that is bottlenecking us with that 99%. And our GPU temperature is 61 and our CPU is 57. So our CPU is running nice and cool. On the 13600K, we are using 41% of the CPU and 99% of the GPU. So we are not CPU bottlenecked and our CPU is running pretty cool. 53 degrees Celsius. That is down a bit from the 7800X3D. We're running at a solid 5.1 gigahertz. Looks like that is not fluctuating. Our wattage is pretty high up there. We're at 75, 79 watts. So around between 75 and 80 watts, which is pulling higher wattage than the 7800X3D. 
I'm here in Apex Legends now, and this game is very easy to run. You can see that we're already almost at 240 frames per second, hitting it a lot. So the interesting thing here is to see the CPU usage. So we are utilizing 99% of our GPU. So again, we're pretty much GPU limited on this game instead of CPU limited. And our wattages are a little different. Our GPU is consuming less power just because this game is a little less powerful to run than Modern Warfare 2. But you can see we are at 200 watts and on our CPU we are at 40 watts, which is even less than Modern Warfare 2 was. Touching down with the 13600K, we are at 54 degrees Celsius, which is already cooler than the 7800X3D. And we are also pulling 77 watts, and we are locked at 5.1 gigahertz. And it looks like we are pulling a solid 240 frames per second, which is not surprising. This game is pretty easy to run. Hopping into Jedi Survivor, you can see we have a frames per second of 104. So we're getting over 100 frames per second in this game. And if we take a look at our CPU GPU usage, same thing as we saw in the other games where the GPU is the limiting factor in this. We're utilizing 100% of it. And our temperatures look pretty good. So we're at 60, 61 degrees Celsius. And our GPU is 61 degrees Celsius. And our wattage is, we hit 50 watts. That was about the maximum that I saw. And then we're at 300 watts on GPU. So this game is very much more taxing on the GPU, clearly, because we're putting, we're pulling nearly 300, wow, 307 watts. That is, crazy. Jedi Survivor on the 13600K yields 53 degrees Celsius. So we're seeing consistent temperature with the 13600K pretty much across all games around that 50 degrees Celsius mark. We are at our 5.1 gigahertz speed and we're pulling 60 between 60 and 70 watts. And we're getting about 100 frames per second. We dip down below 100 frames per second at 99 there. But again, we are completely GPU bottlenecked. We are not CPU bottlenecked. So we're utilizing all of the CPU. You can tell by that 20% usage. And we're at 47, 49 degrees Celsius. And now here we are in Cyberpunk 2077 with no DLSS and no ray tracing. And we are getting over 100 frames per second, over 120 frames per second. So we're seeing that high frame rate that we saw in our other games. So if you're planning on playing Cyberpunk with the 7800X3D and the 4080, then this is gonna be a very good match because these are great frame rates. Looking more in the GPU and CPU statistics, yeah, we're leveraging 96% of the GPU, so we're taking full advantage of that and we are GPU bottlenecked. And then our temperatures, we're at 68 degrees Celsius on our CPU, which is a little bit on the higher end compared to the games we saw minus Apex Legends. And as far as our wattage goes, we're nearing nearly 60 watts on the CPU. Dropping into Night City on the 13600K. Again, this is Cyberpunk on 13600K and we are seeing 60 degrees Celsius. And we are still at that 5.1 gigahertz. It is pretty funny how the 13600K does not have variable CPU clock speeds on these games. And we are pulling a whopping 96 watts. Woo, that is a lot of wattage pumping through that CPU. But this is a demanding game. We are at 68% CPU usage, but again, we are not CPU bottlenecked. We are GPU bottlenecked and the CPU is still running pretty cool. First up, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. The 7800X3D is on the top, the 13600K is on the bottom, and the 7800X3D barely beat the 13600K in average frames per second by 0.2 frames per second. The 13600K did beat it in the maximum 95 percentile frames per second, but the 7800X3D beat the 13600K in the 
1.1% low average frames per second. Resident Evil 4 with the 7800X3D beating out the 13600K in the average frames per second, this time by a larger margin. It also has slightly higher 1% lows at 111, where the 13600K has 107. And the 7800X3D has much larger 95 percentile frames per second at 440, whereas the 13600K only managed 288. In Hogwarts Legacy, the 13600K actually had a five, a five frame rate lead over the 7800X3D. It did have a lower 1% average than the 7800X3D being 61, and the 7800X3D had higher 95 percentile at 298, whereas the 13600K only managed 287. Here is Dead Island 2 with the 7800X3D having a much higher average frames per second at 252, whereas the 13600K only managed 208. So AMD is definitely clearly winning on Dead Island 2. Also, the 1% lows are much higher at 138 versus 32. Wow, that is a big jump. And also the 95 percentile is much larger on the 7800X3D. Here in Cyberpunk, the 13600K actually had five frames per second, more average frames per second than the 7800X3D. It had a lot less 95 percentile frames per second at 203 versus the 7800X3D's 259. But the 13600K had a higher 1% low at 94 versus 77 on the 7800X3D. Now we're looking at CSGO and the 13600K has a slightly higher average frames per second at 380 versus 375 on the 7800X3D. It also maintains a little bit of a lead over the 1% lows and the 13600K barely beats out the 7800X3D in the 95 percentile. I think this is the first CPU we've seen where the 13600K wins across the board against the 7800X3D. Now we have Modern Warfare 2 and the average frames per second on the 13600K is at 209 and on the 7800X3D it is 204. So the 13600K barely beats out the 7800X3D and on the 1% lows, they are pretty much identical. The 13600K has 147 and the 7800X3D has 147.2. And on the 95 percentile, the 13600K has beaten the 7800X3D here by about six, seven frames per second. Here is Apex Legends and the 7800X3D beats out the 13600K just by two frames per second in the average frames per second department. In the 1% lows, the 7800X3D has a more commanding lead and then 95 percentile, the 7800X3D beats out the 13600K just marginally. Taking a look at Geekbench 6, the 7800X3D got a multi-core score of 14,310 and a single core score of 2,539, whereas the 13600K got a multi-core score of 16,089 and a single core score of 2,613, so higher than the 7800X3D. In Cinebench R23, the 7800X3D got a multi-core score of 16,972 points and a single core score of 1,723 and the 13600K scored a whopping 23,362 on the multi-core and 1,943 on the single core. Jumping into the video benchmarking software Puget Bench for the DaVinci Resolve video editing software, the 7800X3D got a score of 2,583 and the 13600K got a score of 2,600. 87 and to put those numbers into a little bit of context here is the score on a 7950x non 3d amd processor which is an absolute monster and on a rtx 4080 and it got a score of 2883 you can also see that we have a 13900k down at the bottom too that scored a 3150 
As for code compilation, I downloaded and built Chromium and on the 7800X3D that finished in 6.1 seconds. And on the 13600K it finished, well it didn't finish, it actually broke and no amount of resurrecting and retrying could get it to work so it didn't compile on the 13600K oddly enough but hey 6.1 seconds on the 7800X3D so I guess that's a win for AMD. Moving on to Speedometer 2, the 7800X3D got a score of 296, whereas the 13600K got a score of 311. So pretty big increase there for the 13600K in terms of JavaScript compilation. Let's talk about heat. During the Pugent Bench run, as it was rendering 4K footage, the 7800X3D was hitting up to 81 degrees Celsius whereas the 13600K during the same point in the test was hitting around 72. There is a nine degree difference there with the 7800X3D running hotter. And this was a pattern all across the board. The 7800X3D was running pretty hot pretty much in everything compared to the 13600K. Woo, okay, that was a lot to cover, but I hope this gives you guys a good comparison of these two CPUs in these different environments. And I'm curious, which one is more appealing to you? On the one hand, this one has much better gaming performance. It is more efficient as well, but it is $100 more than the 13600K. And the 13600K does have better productivity performance as we saw, it is slight, but it is better and it is $100 less, although it consumes a lot more power in those demanding games. So which one would you pick? This one is going to give you a lot more run rate. And if you don't believe me, just look at this comparison I took of the Modern Warfare 2 benchmark, which gives you your CPU bottleneck. And the 7800X3D got 341 frames per second on the CPU where the 13600K got 238 frames per second. If that doesn't tell you how much of a commanding lead the 7800X3D has over this chip, then I don't know what else does. Like that is a lot of runway for a chip. And you know, as games get more and more demanding, you're gonna be able to swap in a new graphics card with this CPU and be off to the races, whereas you might have to upgrade your CPU later down the line, even though you saved $100. So let me know your thoughts in the comment, which one you would pick. And if you like the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.